I want to walk you through a, it's a design pattern. And it, it's, it's a way to implement the functionality of being able to call controller code from something like a uh, page layout. So if you think about, if you think about this situation where we have a page layout and we'd ultimately like to do something like create a button that calls Apex logic, there's no direct way that we can bind a page layout to an Apex class. So unlike in a Visual Force page where we have the option to use the standard controller or to use custom controllers or controller extensions, there is no way to specify that you want to call uh, Apex from within you know, or bind, you know, bind a page layout to a custom controller. All right. So there's a couple of ways that we can, we can go about this. Uh, people have done some stuff where uh, you can create a custom button that executes JavaScript. And then what it does is it uses things like our, uh, our Ajax toolkit to do a web service call up to Salesforce. Another thing that you can do is you can create a custom button that calls a visual force page. And the idea behind this is that from the page layout, the user clicks on the custom button. It requests a visual force page. Now, one of the things that we have the ability to do is in a visual force page, in, specifically in the page tag, you can have an action attribute. And what that does is it says when a user makes a, a GET request up to this page, like they would have done by clicking on the button, let's immediately call an action method in the controller that would have been bound to this page. So essentially, it's, 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 it's two jumps. But from the page layout, the button calls the page. The page immediately says, I'm going to call an action method within the associated controller. What we would do is we would usually do something like pass query string parameters if we want to pull data from the page layout. So we would uh, pass that up to the page. And then inside of our controller code, we would use apexpages.currentPage. And then that's where we'd use our getParameters method so that we could then access the data that's being passed up to the custom controller. All right. So all of this is a mechanism so that we can ultimately call Apex code from a standard page layout. OK? All right. So uh, here's, the, uh, here's the use case in this, uh, in this example. It's, it's Universal Containers wants a prioritize uh, button on the uh, detail page for positions. And so it should execute some Apex logic, which reprioritizes positions and then takes it back to the, the original requesting page. So here's the idea. Here is the page. And notice that we have the extensions is referencing one of our, our classes, which is simply called PCE. And then there is an action attribute called auto run. So in other words, we would have needed to have created, or we're going to need to create, the auto run method inside the controller called PCE. And so here it is. So what it does is here's our action method called auto run. Uh, it does a database query. We go out and get the record. We reset our priority, perform an update, and then ultimately we redirect the user back down to the original requesting page. All right. You can basically enable that ability, uh, custom button to page to controller code, and then return it back to the requesting page. So let's now talk about custom controllers. In the case of a custom controller, we're going to need to implement all of the logic that is necessary for working with our page. So unlike a controller extension where we can rely on the standard controller, or for that matter, a custom controller, to take care of some of the responsibilities, here we need to write all the logic ourselves. 
Now, a key difference between a custom controller and a controller extension is the constructor. So whereas in a controller extension we are passed a reference to the controller we're extending, in a custom controller we have a no parameter constructor. Okay? So when a user requests the page, it uh, calls the no argument constructor, does whatever it needs to do, and then it continues. The way that we reference it in our page is we use the controller attribute, right? Uh, and then interact with it. Now, now people sometimes ask, you know, when would I need to use a controller versus a controller extension? I think that the only time you use a controller extension is when you need, you know, typically when you need that standard controller. So if you're, if you're you know, going to be having your users typically using the standard, you know, edit a record type of operation like we saw with our, our previous, you know, review plus alternate position uh, page. You know, if at the end of the day the primary task is still editing that, uh, editing that review record, then we should not use a custom controller because we don't have, we don't want to have to re-architect the save and the setters associated with the, the review and so on. Now, if you're going to do something which is beyond, uh, you know, sort of editing that record, uh, then you'd want to look at a custom controller. And so, uh, a couple of classic use cases for this is uh, either when you're creating a multi-step wizard, where once again it's uh, you know it's separate from that sort of single form associated with our page layouts. The second thing uh, is the one that we're going to be doing, which is we're going to render a list of items, and we're going to give the end user the ability to apply actions to multiple records in that list. Okay, so. Uh, you know, one of, one of the things that people are trying to avoid is when people, when their end users are uh, performing many repetitive tasks. So you have that situation where a user has to drill down to a record, find the button, click the button, the action occurs, they then go look for the next record, drill down, click the button to apply the action, they go to the next one. So a common, a common use case or business requirement is the ability to take a look at a list of records and apply actions simply by doing things like checking boxes and then saying apply to many. And so that's what we'll be doing in the, the next exercise, which is, uh, a like I said, a classic business requirement that would require a custom controller. Let's jump into some quiz questions. So we have some questions, some review, module review questions. So what's the key differentiator between a, if I showed you two classes, uh, I'm going I'm to combine question one and question two into the same question, which is, if I showed you two classes and so I said one was a controller and the other was a controller extension, how would you tell them apart? Exactly. So uh, you would take a look at the constructor and so if you have a uh, parameter, you know you have an extension. If you have a no parameter, you know you have a controller. Okay. Why are properties helpful in controllers? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, Salesforce, uh, you know, because of the, uh, that model that we, we talked about previously, in order to send data back down to the requesting page, we need get methods. In order to receive the data from the form, we need set methods. And properties are a very easy way to generate that uh, without having to do a lot of uh, extraneous typing. Properties are how we enable data binding between pages and controllers. They make it possible and efficient. So, Let me phrase this question a little bit differently than it says. In what order do methods fire within a controller? So let's say that I do a get, an HP get to a page that is bound to a controller. Uh, how do you think the methods, what order are the methods going to fire? So what's going to happen is that it's going to call the constructor. 
And then what's going to happen is that because this is our first request, it's going to call the getters. So we're going to populate this page with data, and then we're going to return it down to the requesting, uh, yeah, to whoever requested it. So, okay. I've done that, and now I'm going to fill out a form, and I'm going to do uh, an NHP post. Uh, then what is, what are the order of the, so the first thing that's called are the setters, very good. Uh, then the action method, all right. Now, it's either going to keep me on the same page, in which case the third step would be, uh, yeah, we'd return null, but we'd call the getters, okay? And then if we went to a different page, it would call the getters on there, so, okay? Uh, what are some Apex classes that are commonly used within controllers? We took a look at a lot of them. So, what are some standard system classes that we use with controllers, specifically controllers? Not, uh, <laughs> I don't want to hear about uh, map or, <laughs> but what are, what are some that are unique to working with page controllers? Reference. Page reference, very good. Apex pages. Apex pages, uh, very good. We would call, you know, current page, right? Get record. Uh, get record is a method on what Can class? Have a okay, that's something we could use in a controller, but not necessarily unique to a controller. So I'm going to take that one back. <laughs> so uh, standard controller. So when we have our standard controller, we can call get record and get ID. Okay. Think about the user interface. What classes do we have that are uh, associated with the message? message? Yeah, right. What about a drop down? Select option. Select option. Very good. Yeah. Okay. There's probably a few more, but those are some of the main ones.